The Dean of Faculty of Arts, the Dean of the Board of Graduate Studies, and the founding dean of the School of Graduate Studies and Research. Tell me, she was also an academic director of the African Diaspora Studies Program of School for International Training Study Abroad. She currently is a member of the World Learning Global Advisory Board in the United States of America. In 2009, she was elected to UNESCO as the executive board. She was re elected again to the second term of the school, and then she currently serves as the Chancellor of the Women's University in Africa, situated in Harare, Zimbabwe. If I talk of the athletes, it's a thousand of my ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce the next vice president of my <laughs> Professor Jane. Now I'm going to open
point raised about it is better for the children to be educated under the tree than not to be educated at all, you see. And I just want us to show by hand how many of us want to see our children learning in that environment. Nobody. Then we shouldn't wish it on anybody's child. We should do everything to ensure that children are learning in an environment where learning will take place. You know, already when children are in the classroom, they are looking for a place, they are looking for a reason to step out. You know, drop their pen outside. We've all done it, haven't we? And then you ask the child to go outside and then you run away and go home or something like that. Now, we've heard our colleague talk about even the university students who are mature being distracted because they're standing outside. Imagine what it's like for children. It means they're just going and coming and nothing much is taking place. So I don't think um, we should be encouraging that. I remember when we had we were crowding in the um, at the beginning of the free SHS. Somebody was also saying it was better to have 800 children in the classroom at least they are learning. You see, education is not so cheap. They are not learning in that environment where right? that's all. If any learning is taking place, and again, you don't wish it on others, you must want to ensure that what you wish for yourself, what you wish for your children, is the same other people's children are getting. So I think that these comments are important and that I should address them. When I look at your topic, you know, policies for tertiary education, I ask myself, how about policies by students themselves? So I'm going to talk about the students as the agents of change. And you know you can. Yes, you can. You've had the history of it. From the days of Pani Kuma, how old was he to begin with? Have we wanted to change? I think we should. Today we are going home with one boy. So we should check how old he was when he put himself out there. Even before then, there were those who fought to ensure that we had our freedom. You know, our history does not begin with uh, independence. Our history does not even begin with the, with the trade in enslaved Africans. But there were men, there were women, there were youth who fought to make sure that today we can survive. It is our turn now. What are we doing? There were all kinds of organizations formed during the time of Pan Nkrumah to involve other countries. Because you know he's always had a Pan Africanist approach. Because he knew that, you know, if Ghana is doing well and Togo is not doing well, we are not going anywhere. If Togo, if Nigeria is doing well and Ghana is not doing well, we don't fear what the jobs in Nigeria. Do you get it? So he wanted to, to have the, connect, the, the dots connected so that we all move as a group. But the point I'm making is that they, in their time, did what they could. So now, what are we doing? Even during the time of apartheid, there were student leaders who joined with their fellow student leaders in all the countries that came under that kind of attack. Zambia, Zimbabwe, and so on. And they supported their friends in those countries to get rid of those unnecessary and unhealthy burdens. What are we doing today? Which number of questions is that? Is that question three or two? Question three. Okay. So, um, and we've all heard about during the time of General Achampo. It was a military regime, it was a cup of tea. And people, you see, it's about making your points heard. It's about contributing in your, in your own way. Why do you think the country ought to be doing? And it wasn't an easy time. It wasn't a democratic government time where we are assured that, oh, it is all about consensus building and and yet people found the courage to speak and their results and their input made some results. I'm raising all these examples 
for us to know that people have come before us, that they have played their role, and that is why today we are sitting in an auditorium such as this one. And we owe it not only to ourselves, we also owe it to those behind us that will leave better legacies so that the country moves forward in a way that helps all of us. And we know that student activities have played, or student activists rather, have played a huge, huge role in our history as a country. These are all things we should be interested in. You know, I remember the time when uh, his Excellency JJ took over, people who stopped, who went, you know, even suspended semesters, if not terms, cutting from Kobo. So today we can't even find the Kobo to buy. That's another story. But at the time, we got people volunteering because they believed that the country ought to get better. But you see, it looks like we are living in a, a different environment today. But we can make that environment better. Students have voices. Students have power. That student power, where is it now? How can we all crawl back into our barrels? What is happening? Nobody will do a good policy for you if you don't insist on that. Remember someone told us that if you don't lead, you'll be led. If you don't speak, someone will speak for you. May, that person may not necessarily be saying what you want to hear or what you thought ought to have been, to have been said. So you need to take hold of your power and use it well. And you know, students, you are always very capable of this. So sometimes I wonder why. But this is not to say that I don't feel your pain. When you finish school for two years, whatever, three years, more, you don't have a job, you are confused. And when I say I feel your pain, I'm not just using an image, I live it. I also have nieces and nephews who are finished school and who are at home. And I worry a lot on their behalf. What are their plans? Where are they going? How do they see themselves in five years' time? So I'm always engaging them in some kind of conversation because it is not an easy thing for them. They know that by now they should have moved from point A to point B. Yes, point A is over, but they're still there. They haven't moved yet. So we know. We feel all of it. And this is why we always partner with the youth. We need to hear from you. We know you have the solutions. Let me give my own examples from the campus. I knew that the government money was in the right now. I've been hot water and so on and so forth. And then subventions never came on time. Sometimes they never came. So now you're going to have the university. What are you going to do? My whole proposal was for the university to focus on what it was doing, which was to dispense true liberal education. The type that opens your mind and makes you ready for anything. But meanwhile, there were strengths we have. I just called the students and asked them, so assuming we are not going to get any money, you have your student account. And this, this account is there on behalf of your colleagues. It's not yours. You may be the president and so on. That's fine. But you are in the position of a leader. And there are others worse of whose money you are overseeing. So I remember one day, one group had come from one call or so, and it was getting just too often. Oh, we want to go for this conference. We want to travel to this place. I said, that's fine. But have our funding. And that's why we have come. Because, you know, I had offered myself as a patron. And of course, they were happy, but they didn't know what was coming. So I said, OK. It's good for you to travel. I agree with you. In fact, if I have the money, I'll let you all go. But what are your needs on this campus? At the time, the needs were housing, 
because we had opened the doors for many students to come in, whether they had accommodation or not. We used what the students based on the number of beds. Can you imagine? So if Hall A has 200 beds, we 200 students. I think when the time will change, 